I'm about to teach you how to convert your controllers into minimal APIs for a better design, more cohesion and improved performance. So let's dive in. Controllers have been around since the early days of building APIs in .NET and to create one you need to implement one of the controller base classes. In this case I'm implementing an API controller so I'm implementing the controller base base class and I'm also decorating it with the API controller attribute. To define a route for your controller, you use the route attribute and then every method that you define inside of the controller class becomes an endpoint, but you also have to decorate the method with the respective HTTP attribute. So in this case, I'm defining a post endpoint and a get endpoint and so on. So what is the problem with controllers? All of the methods inside of a controller class represent specific separate endpoints which means they have pretty much nothing in common and as your controller grows it becomes harder to maintain because the cohesion between the endpoints is pretty low. Also all of the controller endpoints share the same dependencies. In this case my controller is very thin because I only have one service but if you have multiple services they will be shared between all of your endpoints and realistically you only need one or two services for a single endpoint which means that you are wasting memory and allocating more resources than you need to satisfy the constructor of the controller regardless of if the endpoint that is being invoked will use all of the services or not. So let's convert the products controller into minimal APIs and see what are the differences between the two. I'm going to make a copy of this class and I'm going to be adding the minimal API endpoints inside of the copy. So let's call this class products endpoints and I'm going to rename the file to match the name of the class. Because I'm going to be defining minimal APIs, I can completely get rid of the attributes that were decorating this class and also get rid of the controller base base class. I'm not going to be needing the constructor injecting the iSender because minimal APIs use a different approach for dependency injection and let's try to fix all of our endpoints to use minimal APIs. And then I'm going to show you some other features of minimal APIs. First of all, we need access to one of the interfaces that allows us to define a minimal API endpoint. And one of those is the I endpoint route builder. So what I can do is make this class static and define a static method inside, which I will call map product endpoints. I'm going to define an extension method on the I endpoint route builder and we're going to use this instance to define our minimal API endpoints. So to define a post endpoint, you would say map post. The same applies if you want to map to the other HTTP verbs. So you would have map get, map delete, map put, and so on. So first of all, I need to define a route for my endpoint. And this one is API slash products. This is going to match the create product endpoint that we had in the controller. Then I need to define a body for my request and this is going to include two things. First of all, I need to pass in any data that I want to have inside of my minimal API endpoint and secondly, I also need to inject any service that I may need to satisfy my request. So in this case, I'm going to inject the iSender from Mediator and this is how you use dependency injection with minimal APIs. So minimal APIs uses method injection, whereas with controllers, you will typically use constructor injection. I'm also noting that controllers do support method injection, so you could be using this approach regardless, but this is how you do it with minimal APIs. Then I'm going to take the contents of this method and move it into my minimal API endpoint. I'll fix the sender. And what are we going to do with the OK method? This method was exposed by the controller base class, but with minimal APIs, you have access to the results class, which is a factory for creating various types of results. And you can just say results.ok. And you will see that all of the methods have the same names as with controllers. So with this in place, our minimal API endpoint is functional, but I also want to show you an alternative approach to how you can configure this endpoint. And we're actually going to reuse the existing method that we have from our controller. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the parameters into individual lines, and I'm also going to inject the I sender. So this will be the create product endpoint. Let's fix the contents inside. So this is going to be a task 
and it's going to return an I result, which is going to match what the minimal API endpoint is expecting. Then I can say return result.ok. I'm going to get rid of the HTTP post attribute and I'm going to make this method static. This is important for two reasons. First of all, I'm inside of a static class and I can't have instance methods. And secondly, now I can take the create product method and pass it as the request delegate for my minimal API endpoint. You can see how this simplifies the minimal API definition. And there's another benefit to this because the create product method is now public on our static class, which means that we can use it inside of our tests. So if you want to unit test your minimal API endpoints, it's relatively easy to do. I'm just going to show you a quick example. So I'm not going to be writing the entire test, but what you would do is say product endpoints, and then you have access to the create product method, and you can call it and test the result that you get back. Now, I personally think that unit testing your controllers is completely pointless because they don't really contain any behavior. All they do is just pass the request along to the other services. It's far better to use functional testing where you actually call your API using an HTTP client instead of unit testing the individual methods. So let's also convert the other endpoints that we have to minimal APIs. I'm going to make this static and I need access to the I sender from mediator. Then I'm going to fix sending of my query and let's return results.ok. I also need to update the return type to be an I result. Now I can go ahead and say app map get and this is going to be the API slash products endpoints and we can say get products. And this is how easy it is to move from controllers into minimal APIs. This endpoint is slightly different because we're giving a name to our route and I'm going to show you how to do this with minimal APIs. So let's start by getting rid of this attribute. Then I'm going to make this static. We're going to update the return type to be I result. And we're also going to inject the I sender from mediator. Now I can send my query, return an OK result if everything succeeds, or I can return a not found result if I run into an exception. Let's also do this for the remaining endpoints that we have. So I'm going to make this static. Let's move the arguments into separate lines. We need to make this into an I result. I need to add the I sender from mediator, and then I need to fix my endpoint body. This is returning no content in a success path and a not found result in case of an exception. And let's also fix the delete endpoint. I'm going to make it static, return I result from this method, give it the I sender using method injection, and let's just fix the compile errors. So now that we have all of our static methods, we can go ahead and easily define our endpoints. So I'm going to say, map get the route is api slash product slash id and we can say get product so single not plural then i'm going to map the put endpoint the route is going to be the same as with our get product endpoint so update product and we also have a delete endpoint for deleting a product with the same route and we can pass it the delete product method all right and we just define all of our minimal API endpoints instead of using controllers. Remember that these endpoints also had a name associated. So how you can do that with minimal APIs is by saying with name, and then you can pass in what is the name of this endpoint. So this is the get product. I'm going to use the name of operator for compile time safety. This one will be update product, and this one will be delete product. Now we are functionally equivalent with our controller. However, you can see that the route for individual endpoints is pretty repetitive. And with a controller, we had a route on the controller level, which would define the base path of the route. And then we would have the remainder of the route in the individual endpoints. So how you can do this with minimal APIs is by calling map group. And this will allow you to map an endpoint group. You need to specify what is the prefix for the API routes for this group. So I'm going to say API products, 
and I'm going to take the group builder into a variable. Then I can map the individual endpoints using this route group builder and I need to get rid of the repetitive part of the route. So I'm going to delete API products from all of the routes and this is what I am left with. So the cool part about using route groups is that now you can further decorate your group. For example, you can add rate limiting with the require rate limiting method and specify some rate limit policy. You can also define authentication by calling require authorization. You can also specify what is the authorization policy that applies to all of these endpoints, but I'm not going to be using any of that right now. So right now we have a set of minimal API endpoints that are functionally equivalent with our controller, but they are not part of the public API because we didn't call the map product endpoints method. So you would call that from the program class and you can say here, instead of mapping your controllers, you can say map product endpoints and you would define an extension method for each of your minimal API endpoints. And this is the slight downside to this approach because you have to remember to call this method every time that you define a minimal API endpoint. So there's a library that allows you to do this automatically and it's called Carter. So this is an alternative to defining your minimal APIs and I'm going to show you how you can use it. So you'll install the Carter library. Then you need to configure the required services. So you say builder services add Carter. Then I need to map the Carter endpoints. So I'll say app map Carter. This is going to scan my assembly and look for any implementations of the iCarter module interface. Then it's going to call the respective method inside to register the endpoints. So here's what that will look like. So now our class is no longer static because it needs to implement the iCarter module interface. This interface exposes one method, which is the add routes method, and I'm going to put it at the top of this class. And inside of it, we're going to define our individual endpoints. This is as easy as just copying all of this code and adding it here. So now we are defining our endpoints using Carter instead of using static methods, which also means that I can get rid of this call here. And now when I call map Carter, it's going to instantiate this Carter module and call the add routes method to define my minimal API endpoints. So these are the two common ways how you can register your endpoints with the runtime. And I want to talk about one more point about minimal APIs and that is strong typing. So right now we've been using the iResult interface to represent the results of our minimal API endpoints, but this approach isn't strongly typed. And it's also missing some important metadata that is required for generating your API contracts. And with .NET 7, there's an option to use strongly typed results with minimal APIs, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So instead of using the results class to generate your responses, you would be using the typed results. I'm going to find an endpoint with more than one return type, such as this one that returns an OK and a not found result. And I'm going to show you how to use strongly typed results. So let's start by using a typed results here. You'll see that this class exposes the same set of methods as the results class. However, the return type is different. So if we check out what results dot not found is returning, it's the I result interface and typed results not found returns a not found result. So in this case, it's also strongly typed to our argument, which is a string. And in the case of the typed results, okay, this is going to be the product response. We are still returning the I result interface from our method. And how we would turn this into a strongly typed result is by saying results, and you can use the generic variant and then you can define the individual results returned by this method. So you can say, okay, of product response. This is going to match the first return type. And I'm going to say that this also returns a not found response. And this one is of type string, which is going to match our second return type. So you can see that this is much more verbose than using the I result interface but it's also strongly typed and it's going to help Swagger better understand what your minimal API endpoint is returning and in turn it's going to generate a better API contract. I hope this video was valuable and that you learned something new about minimal APIs 
don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and until next time, stay awesome.